Hey friends. Okay, so this week we're talking about um, the round trip process to pull um, a elevation from Vectorworks into Photoshop, paint it in Photoshop, and then bring it back into Vectorworks as a render texture. So this is creating custom render texture paint elevations, okay? Uh, I am going to put more uh, resources on Photoshop at, in a separate tab for you in the resources so that you have those as a reference. Um, if you're not as familiar with Photoshop, we'll talk about a couple of specific paintbrush tools um, just to give you a taste of what you can do. And if you do the costume assignment, you'll get more Photoshop practice as well uh, in the next few weeks. But for now, let's start with this render assigner assignment template that I have provided you. Um, you can go ahead and open that up and I'm just going to do the wall. You will do both the wall and the floor, okay? Um, so I'm gonna start with the wall and the first thing I'll do is create a viewport on a new um, sheet layer and this is because I wanna make sure I'm looking at uh, the right size and resolution, okay? So I'm coming into my sheet layers. I'm going to just do an eight and a half by 11 sheet. I'm gonna duplicate the template file, um, delete the title block off of it because I don't actually need the title block in this case and rename it wall render export or something like that. It's not going to matter in terms of what we actually end up with, but that's where I'm gonna end up putting this viewport that I'm about to create. I'm also going to edit this sheet and what I'm going to change is the raster rendering DPI. And that's because I want to have a more detailed uh, painting in Photoshop. And so I'm going to run that up from 72 to 300, which is sort of a minimum um, rendering for print. Okay, so that'll give you enough pixels to work with once you get into Photoshop. Okay, so let's go back into our scenery layer and we're going to pop into the front view. I'm just gonna use the render views option to snap to that front view. And I will go ahead and create a new viewport. I'm going to tell it to go onto sheet four or sheet X-4, that wall render export. I'm not too concerned about any of this stuff. I do wanna keep it in quarter inch scale. And the reason is that um, this core drawing file, these design layers are in quarter inch scale. So if I export in quarter inch scale, when I bring it back in, it'll be in quarter inch scale still. Um, if it were a true paint elevation, you would do it in half inch scale like any other elevation. So that's just an FYI. But in our case, we're gonna keep it in quarter inch scale. We're gonna hit okay. Here we go, all right? Um, so now I have a 300 DPI piece of paper with my uh, wall on it, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and export this as a Photoshop file. So I come over to the export tab, I choose image file, and I change this resolution. It, should, it may have dropped back down to uh, 72. I change it back up to 300, and I click this each page as separate images, okay? And when I hit that render, it's gonna show me what that page is gonna look like, right? Um, and my print size is that sheet without the border, and that makes sense and is fine. And then I go into this format, and it may be initially saying it's a JPEG. I'm gonna go ahead and export it as a Photoshop file, okay? So that is my Photoshop right there. And let me get this into the window, and I hit save. It's gonna ask me where to put it, um, let's put it in this Vectorworks cloud. No, not in Vectorworks cloud services, sorry. Let's put it in our, in our Vectorworks class. And we're gonna just do a new folder and this will be the render assignment. And I'll call this wall elevation. And it will now save that as a PSD, a Photoshop file. So next stop will be over to Photoshop, okay? So we come back over to Photoshop. Oh, hi Photoshop. It looks like I've been practicing this. It looks like we need to open this new file, all right? So our new file is in, again, in the desktop, in the Vectorworks folder. Uh, 
your assignment. Wall elevation PSD, open. Okay, here we are, right? Um, I don't need the rest of this page at this point. So I'm gonna just take my uh, selection tool, throw a quick crop box around this wall and go to crop, all right? So that's gonna at least get me a little closer to the actual size, okay? Um, if you have not worked in Photoshop before, uh, I would switch over here to this painting tab. Um, so you may open it up and be in essentials. I would switch to painting. That's gonna give you access to your brushes. And when I did that, I didn't have this color. I just had the swatches tab open. Um, so I would come over here and add, maybe in this little menu, how did I do that? Hold please, where did I get that from? Window, I went to window and I added color. Um, that was how I did that. So now I have that color tab as well. So I have swatches that I can choose from, but I also just have straight color um, that I can use. Uh, I also twirl open this layers tab, okay? Because one of the things I don't want to do is paint on this actual layer. I would rather paint on a blank layer that lives behind that layer. And the other thing I'm gonna do, and I'll just rename this now as the Vectorworks or the VWX layer. Um, I don't want to accidentally edit it. So I'm gonna make that the top layer. I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. So that will allow those lines to come through, um, but the white will disappear as you paint underneath it. So as an example, I paint underneath, right? Um, and the paint is below the white and the lines now multiply onto that, okay? So that is that setting. Once I've done that, I can even hit this little lock to make sure I don't mess it up. So now I'm on my layer two and uh, I'm gonna show you how to get some of these cool paint brushes that I have, right? I have the whole watercolor set you probably don't. You probably just have general dry media, wet media, special effects, right? I got this watercolor set and I got that from the internets. So to get those additional brushes, you can just right click in this brush panel and select get more brushes. It's going to fly you out into your Adobe page and that um, will allow you to then download uh, a variety of brushes. I just chose this watercolor tab and the spatter because spatter tends to be something I like to play with as a painter. Um, I also think that the um, concept brushes are really cool. So if you're interested in playing more in Photoshop, uh, getting those concept brushes is probably worthwhile. Once you download them, they'll go into your downloads. Um, on your computer and then you can open up that file with Photoshop and it will automatically add them into your Photoshop brush catalog, right? So as an example, I'm in Finder. I've already added these watercolor brushes. I have my spatter brushes. I'm gonna right click, open with, choose Photoshop. It's gonna open that. And now at the very bottom of my brush menu, I have spatter brushes that I can play with, okay? Most of these paint brushes are best served by a touchpad of some sort. So a stylus, um, a Wacom tablet, something like that. Um, because then you get pressure and tilt sensitivity and it's like painting with an actual brush. Uh, I'm just using my mouse today because that's what I'm set up for and I'm not expecting you to have a, ta a tablet to draw on. But if it's something that you might be getting into more, then that's something you should consider purchasing. They're not too expensive. You can get a relatively inexpensive one and have access to more of the flexibility, the pressure sensitivity of these brushes, which is pretty cool. Um, this will just be a little intro. Um, so I'm gonna start on this layer two. I'm gonna give myself a paint bucket of a light color, right? Just something kind of neutral. And then I'm going to come in and put some texture on top of it using, a, using one of my brush tools, okay? So I'm gonna grab a watercolor brush. I'm gonna pick something kind of flowy and let's see what we got. It's a little hard to tell. Let's try this giant something something. Giant, what is it called? Who knows? Um, and then I'm gonna pick a little bit of a darker color or a little bit of a different color. 
I'm just gonna kind of rub some of that paint in and you can kind of see the paint coming through, right? Um, that's kind of nice, right? I'm getting a little bit of a plastery kind of texture. I can continue to like play with these different watercolor textures, right? Um, I might go a little darker gray and kind of give myself something around the top edge of the wall and then I can blend that in later. I'm gonna do the same thing over this door frame, right? I'm gonna just kind of highlight the door frame and the window frame. I'm ignoring what's happening outside of the page and then I can grab what's a what would be a blender brush and you can do that in your wet media. This wet blender is a good one and that'll kind of kick that paint around a little bit. And if you make it smaller using your uh, open and close brackets, then you can kind of blend the paint together, right? Um, using all of this kind of mushy paint, whatever, right? Um, another thing that can be helpful to play with is like pulling the strength down. So that way it might not pull the paint quite as much. You really have to just play with the different brushes in order to see what they're going to do. Um, they're also going to do a different thing when you have an actual touch sensitive paintbrush, right? So if I were working with an actual tool and not a mouse, um, then I could use pressure sensitivity to kind of give me a more painterly texture, right? Um, so you can do whatever you want on this wall. It's chill. I'm not concerned about artistic style. Um, I just want you to play with these paintbrush tools, these wet media paintbrush tools. Maybe there's a little spatter that goes over it. So I'm going to go down and grab one of my spatter brushes all the way at the bottom of this pile. Um, so maybe I just throw a little bit of dots right on top of it and I'm going to pick a lighter color. Oh my, that's a little too big, right? Um, let's throw some dots, right? Just a little breakup of texture, right? A little spatter going over my wall. I don't know why we would have dots hanging out on the wall like this, but there they are, right? Um, so this is basically a way for you to use. Let's see what we get if we do. Hmm. This all looks like a mess of undo, undo, undo. Um, let's go with a little darker color. Um, I'm not loving any of this stuff. Maybe it's just like dirt at the bottom of the wall. Right, just throw some dirt at the bottom of the wall. A little spatter flying up at the bottom of the wall. Something like that maybe? I don't know. Um, Basically, this is going to give you those options that you would have as a painter um, to add some texture to your wall. All right, let's say this is what I'm working with, okay? Um, I can save this wall elevation. I'm now going to actually trim it to exactly the size of the wall. Um, you can do that or you can like overshoot and come back. Um, if you think you're going to edit it some more, it might be worth doing that but I'm just selecting with the mar marquee tool, the rectangular marquee tool, the wall itself, and I will crop my layer down to that size. So image crop, and now I'm just looking at the actual shape of the wall. The next thing I can do is export this as a PNG. <coughs> so now this is wall elevation PNG, and that will come live in the same folder with this render assignment as uh, the existing Photoshop file. So saved that. So now I have, what is a paint elevation of just the wall, right? Um, I'm going to pull this into Photoshop and test that it works. If I like it, um, and once I get it aligned properly on my wall, um, a thing you could do, right, is turn off that Vectorworks layer so that you don't see any double lines in case you're not quite precisely lined up. So that might be something to then export and replace um, after you've set your wall layer. So now let's go back into Photoshop. I'm sorry, let's go back into Vectorworks 
and we will apply this wall paint as a texture on your actual wall. Um, so we're just going to save this Photoshop file and fly that out of the way. Um, and I'm going to come back into my design layer. Okay, we're going to adjust a render texture now. So the first thing I'm going to do is just turn my teapot to OpenGL so that as I apply a render texture, I'll be able to see what I'm up to. Okay. I also want to grab a measurement off of this wall, right? Because I'm going to be applying a texture that is the correct size. I want it to match the wall size. So it looks like we're at 17 foot eight. Uh, it's not a precise length, but let's go with that for the purposes of this experiment. So 17 foot eight is the length of our wall. I'm gonna now come into the render tab, okay? I'm going to choose um, the right side of the wall, which will be the side that's facing us right now. And then I'm going to adjust its texture. And the default that it went to is glass because that's probably the only texture in this file. Oh, there's an instrument texture. So if I were to switch to the instrument texture, it would be a lighting instrument, right? Um, but I don't have my cool new custom texture that I just made. So I come into my render, my resource manager, right? And I'm going to bring in this new texture that I've just created. So I'm going to right click in my resource manager and I'm going to ask for a new, uh, render a new resource in render assignment template. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here and select render works texture. And that is going to allow me to import this image file that we just exported from Photoshop and apply it as a texture to this wall. So this is going to be the wall texture. That's the name. The color is going to come from an image and it's going to ask me what image. Um, and since I was just over here in render assignment, this wall elevation image is the one I'll choose. Okay. So there it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let it tile, even though I don't necessarily need it to do that. And I'm going to click OK. All right. So now it's tiling, tiling, tiling. Um, the size currently is itty bitty small and I want to actually set it by the image. So if I come in here and I set by image, there is this measuring tape situation, right? And if I drag it all the way across the whole thing, I can set the scale of the render texture by a feature of the image. Because I cropped the image to the edges of the wall, I know that the feature of the width of the wall should be 17 foot 8 inches. And so I click OK, and now my wall texture will blow up to that scale. OK, now I click OK again. Um, and in my resource manager, I now have this wall texture as one of my textures available. OK, so I can come over here and choose. Let me close out that resource manager. I can come over here to the render tab and choose this new wall texture that I've created. Um, select that, right? So I can either double click on it or I hit select. Um, and it is now pretty well aligned to the wall. Um, and that's because I got the scale right and I got the offset correct. So those things you can tweak and change if you, for example, did not crop it exactly to the box, the bounding box, you can either select that feature and then adjust your offset. So like six inches, right? Now we're seeing all of those lines um, from my render minus six inches back and it's back square on the wall. Okay. You may end up doing that a little bit more when you play with the circle for the floor, right? But in general, right, you're seeing now that wall texture is applied to the wall in Vectorworks as the surface, right? So you're seeing that whole plastery painty thing that I did with the weird dust on the ground. Um, and it is now representing that render. Okay. So your next step in this process is going to be to take a viewport of the top view of this circle um, and pull that into a new render export layer. Um, I'd love to see some sort of a pattern on this floor that relates to the circliness of it. So whatever that may look like, build out that texture file in Photoshop, export as PNG, bring it back in as a render texture, adjust the size of it to the diameter of this circle, which I think is like 20 feet. 
Uh, yep. And then um, make it line up correctly for that, uh, for that surface. So that is our goal for this week. Let me know as you have questions and I will see all of you soon. Thanks friends. Bye.